In effort to start getting the inside of the house more to our liking, we started with the walls. There were tons of cracks all over that needed repaired using a mesh joint tape and then mudding. But before we could finish, I had an accident. Fingers crossed that it's nothing that needs surgery. Before we get started with the mudding, we're gonna put this. Ugh. Oh my goodness. That's funny. It. It's like really heavy duty construction paper, I guess. We're gonna put this down along the border of the walls because that's where the mud is gonna splatter onto the floor and we're gonna try to protect our hardwood floors. Alright, we have these two zombie foot buckets. And we have the joint compound for the wall. We're gonna mix it up. After we got it all mixed up, I insisted that I tried it first, even though neither one of us had ever done this before. I tried a couple of passes and quickly handed it over to Chris, which he did the remainder of the area. We started with this section of the living room where we had painted a large sample of different white paints. There was a pretty good sized crack that isn't very noticeable in the video, but the wall was also not very straight. It had a bow to it. So we decided to mud a larger area to kind of smooth it out a little bit more. So what are your thoughts? First coat. <laughs> Stop. Uh, my thoughts are, I mean, there's some really talented people out there in this world and I ain't one of them. <laughs> it was my first time, so I feel like it was okay. I feel like I could have done a little bit better. As Cousin Landa would say, the seven Ps. Prior proper planning prevents piss poor performance. We did not do <laughs> the proper planning. We did the prior planning. <laughs> we should have done prior proper planning. <laughs> you know, but it's okay because it's a lot easier when you learn when you make mistakes than learning by the book. Who wants to learn right the first time, really? <laughs> Come on, if we're being honest with ourselves. You learn by making mistakes and you I do. grow. Well, the weak ones would raise our hands. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> the weak ones. All right, well, um, if you've done this before and uh, you got any tips, let us know. So about midway through, not midway, towards the end, we called Chris's brother to give us some pointers over FaceTime. And it did help. I think we had too much mud on the wall. Would you agree with that, Chris? Would you agree with that? He doesn't want to answer because I was telling him that he was putting too much mud on the wall and he didn't want to listen to me. And he kept adding mud, saying, oh, it just needs more. <laughs> I didn't want you to be able to use this on Well, I'm going to use it. <laughs> so we're done for the day. We're, we got to clean up. And we're gonna tackle this, I don't know when, but we'll we'll do another layer. We might have to sand some parts down. <laughs> Say nice things to your, you know, drywall people and your, your mudding people, because they're talented. They know what they're doing. <laughs> this is a specialty trade here. <laughs> I don't take it out of there, that's I don't. what she said. <laughs> Stop. What I'm looking at here is like, this right here <clears throat> is about what you want it to be like. Oh. Okay. So like so that. So before we did way so we too did much bit, we did Well, oh, I don't, did you do more water? Yeah, there was, yeah, it was a, it was a lot. Water. All right, so let's, let's do some more though. Okay. Yeah, pull it. Oh, all right. Hang on, just don't pull it out all the way. Luckily, Chris's brother came over to help. They got the first coat done throughout the house in just a couple of hours. Chris then felt more confident tackling the second coat by himself after sanding first. 
For the second coat, he used a pre-mixed joint compound just to make it a little easier. A little update for you. So we went to my brother and sister-in-law's house um, today. Went and watched my nephew's soccer game and we played Joker's Marbles. If you ever played that, it's a fun game. And uh, Laura did well. You know, all, most of it did well. We played a lot, so um, most of us won more than once. One of us was bragging on the way out. <laughs> Somebody was being prideful. And pride comes before the fall. <laughs> and that's what happened to Laura. <laughs> yeah, kidding. Jokes aside, so here we are. Um, Laura was walking down this the sidewalk on the side of the house and she had turned around to say something to Natalie and she didn't realize that there was a step down there. And so she, her foot did not hit ground when she thought it was going to hit ground. So I heard a pop and and then like instantly felt pain, right? So I lowered myself to the ground and elevated my foot and I think I was yelling. I think I broke my foot. <laughs> Took my shoe off in case it swelled up real big. And yeah, here we are. As it's gone on, it's probably been been about two hours now. Um, it's gotten a little more sore and it's definitely gotten more swollen. Um, it's not something I need to go to the emergency room for, but tomorrow we're gonna go get an x-ray and see what kind of damage I did. Last night was not that fun. It's hard to get comfortable. Definitely more swollen, let me show you. I don't know if it shows up as well on camera, but... Yeah, it does. I mean, if we had a comparison, you know. Ice feels really good. It's not the same as a... Normal foot. Your normal foot. So we're, um, we're gonna go get it x-rayed now. All right, so Laura's in there getting her x-ray. I have to wait here um, in the waiting room. And when we get on the x-ray, we'll go back to the exam room and go over the results with the provider. Okay, so I've been thinking more about maybe how I actually planted whenever I step. And I think what happened is, so there was this long pathway on this decline and at the bottom there was this one step so I think I was walking and I think I planted like right on the edge of that step and then my foot went forward which kind of bent it and then it went out <laughs> which is why it's all up here that is the problem so that's my theory from replaying it in my head unofficial read is I have an avulsion fracture of my navicular bone. Never even heard of that bone. <laughs> How this nurse practitioner kind of described it is like, say this is my bone, and you have tendons, right, that are attached. So instead of the tendon ripping off, it actually ripped off some of the bone. <laughs> like the tendon took a piece of bone and uh, fractured it. She said it's pretty rare, she's never seen it before, so that's awesome. Um, we are waiting to hear back from orthopedics to see if um, I'm gonna need surgery. In the meantime, she splinted it and I'm not allowed to bear weight on it, so that's gonna be fun. I'm officially mobile again. Nothing gonna stop me now. Yeah. Only a few cracks, um, <laughs> some unsteady pavement. Yeah, maybe, maybe some stairs, I'll think. <laughs> maybe some stairs. Only those things will stop her. <laughs> The next couple of days consisted of lounging around, trying to stay off of my foot until we could go see an orthopedic surgeon where we would find out if I would need surgery. 
hoping we would get good news and be able to get back to house projects soon. But until then, I sat back and enjoyed Chris taking care of me. <laughs>